Where, where did the Jews, did Jesus have the care of us trial? <clears throat> Verse 28. Um, then the Jews led Jesus from the care of us, the palace of the Roman governor. Mm. Okay. So Jesus the Roman governor. Roman governor. Uh, so to the next question where was the headquarters of the Roman governor located um, it's not written in the Bible but I was so curious you know I had to make my research to if this is the Jerusalem city, Roman governor usually they live in Caesarea. Caesarea. But during this festival, he stayed inside the Jerusalem. So here is a temple, and this is Antonia's fortress. And here it is Herod's palace. Now, when I made a research in Google, some commentary said Antonia Fortress was, here was, you know, uh, Pilate stayed. Uh, other commentary said part of Herod King Palace was Governor's Palace, part of. So either here, either here, but inside of Jerusalem city, Thailand state. Walking distance. Yeah, walking distance. Uh -huh. I mean, I spent a lot of time trying to find out this one. Well, okay. <clears throat> he just received the trial total five times. Gospel yeah. Matthew, write it down. Jesus was Caiaphas, and they went to Pilate. Gospel Mark, the same. Caiaphas, and then went to Pilate. As the Luke says, Jesus was tried by, when we say Caiaphas, there's a Sanhedrin, they all, they gathered together. Caiaphas and went to Pilate. Pilate sent Jesus to Herod. So, you know, it was, they were in the same building, same palace. And then Herod sent him back to Pilate. Gospel John says, first Jesus went to Annas, and then went to Caiaphas, where the Sanhedrin gathered together, Caiaphas, and then Pilate. So when we look at all together, Five times, Annas, Caiaphas, and then went to Pilate, and then went to Herod, and then again Pilate finally. So Jesus tried five times. Okay, so the question number two. Karen? Why didn't the Jews enter the headquarters of the Roman government? Mm. To avoid ceremonial uncleanness because they wanted to be with the Passover. Yeah, so the Roman governor is Gentile. And then, I don't know. They enter Gentiles' residence or <laughs> touch it. They have their own law 
and then they become unclean. And if they are unclean, they cannot, you know, uh, eat the passable. Not only that, most of them are leaders, religious leaders, you know, priests, and uh, uh, they have to serve the, in the temple the passable. And then if they become defiled by the Gentile, contact with the Gentile, then uh, <clears throat> it is a big problem, right? And so they stayed outside the palace of the Roman governor. Okay, next question. Oh. By what sin were their heart defiled? I mean, how did the pilot carry on the trial of Jesus? Just one question. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't want to become unclean, so they refuse to enter the the courtyard. I mean, where the trial take place, they didn't want to go in. But how about their heart? Uh, their heart um, were filled with like, killing, hatred. Right. Hatred. Their heart is filled with hatred and murderous desire. They, they are so eager. They determined to kill Jesus. So their heart is wicked, evil. But you know, outside, they, they, uh, I don't want to become unclean by touching the Gentile. So what a hypocrisy. Okay, next question, Judy. How did the pilot carry on the trial of Jesus? 29. So pilot went outside to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? Mm -hmm. So Pilate just went outside and... Yeah, Pilate went back and forth. Jesus was inside the, uh, you know, court. And then all the Jewish leaders are outside the building. So when he, you know, Pilate went outside, why are you, are you accusing him? Then he came inside and asked Jesus, what did you do? And then he go outside, ask them, and coming inside, ask Jesus. So that was the trial, going back and forth, back and forth. All right, question seven. Or oh, three. Okay, Karen? Um, what question is Pilate to be given the trial? Um, what charges are you bringing against? Right. Now, for trial procedure is you listen from plaintiff first. What charges do you bring? After that, then judge listen the defendant you know, what you have done. And then the judge will decide, give a sentence. So Pilate starting the uh, trial. So what charges are you bringing against this man? Okay, next. Mm -hmm. so what charge did the Jews state against Jesus? Oh. First story, if he, he were not a criminal, they replied, you would not have handed him over to him, over to you. Mm -hmm. So they wanna give him teachers death penalty. Mm. He said he's been doing evil. He is a criminal. That's why we brought you, brought him here. So it's kind of a vague. Okay, next question. How can you tell that Pilate was not willing to be involved in this case? Mm -hmm. 
the reverse, Kaila said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. So saying this, he said she doesn't want to um, charge him or be involved with him. Yeah, he, he didn't want to, you know, take this case. So, take him yourself and do it on your own. And this was early in the morning. They said the uh, Roman governor, this is early in the morning, maybe, you know, Roman governors began to work from sun, sunrise. So around 6 or 6.30, they already up <coughs> doing the official works. And Herod was up also. And then, okay, so next question, Karen. Why did the Jews refuse to take Jesus back? But we have no right to execute anyone. Yeah. We don't, we don't have a right to execute anyone. That's why we cannot take him back. You, you must try him. <laughs> they force Pilate to take Jesus. We have no right to put anyone to death. So, Pilate, you have authority to put him to death. So, you must take him. Next question, Supervisor. Why would their answer fulfill the words of Jesus? 32. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken indicating the kind of death he was going to die would be fulfilled. So what did Jesus say? What kind of death he's going to, you know, have? Jesus said about his death. The son of man will be betrayed by the, you know, mm -hmm. scribes and priests handed over to the Gentiles. They will beat him, spit on him, mock him, you know, and put him to death. And in three days, he will rise again. So, he just spoke about his own death in the hand of Gentiles, and also in the prophecies, all the prophecies. Psalm chapter 22, you know, they pierced my hand, my feet. Isaiah all revealed uh, horrible death. So in uh, Israel, as you know, they don't have any cross death. Mm -hmm. Good, good uh, uh, question. Now, Israel. Even though they said that they don't have a, a right to put anybody to death, the Jews, they are, have a certain autonomy within their, you know, and, you know, they kill Stephen by stoning. By stoning. But the Romans, <laughs> when they execute, non-citizen is crucifixion. Non-citizen, crucifixion. Citizen? Beheaded. Beheading. So, if the Jews take Jesus back and they, they kill by themselves, it will be stoning and it won't fulfill the prophecy and Jesus' own word. Romans take Jesus and execute because Jesus is 
to them as a non-citizen, non-Roman citizen, so it will be crucifixion. Pilate went inside and began to interrogate Jesus. A question did he ask Jesus? So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? So yeah. he asked him, You are the king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. Now, Pilate trying to find guilt from Jesus. And that question was, are you the king of the Jews? I mean, John cannot write whole trial. It's going to be a one book, but you know, he just put the point. But the Jews brought the three the um, heal of Jesus. First, he disturbed or mis misled the, the nation, the Jewish nation, our nation. He misled our nation. And then second was he said he objected, objected, paying taxes, tribute or taxes to Caesar. Okay. Third is, he said he's a king. So, pilot it's missed this one, and then he talk about king because this will be, you know, against the Caesar. So Pilate start uh, interrogating about this issue. Are you the king of the Jews? Okay, second question. The question did Jesus ask Pilate before? Was that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Okay, so instead of answering yes or no, Jesus asked Pilate question. Do you, do you say this of your own accord or did others say to you, say to you about me? This is a very, very typical question, the passage. There are about 20, 30 different, you know, interpretation of this one. And so, Jesus asked, kind of asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Then Jesus asked back, you say that out of your own or is it second-hand knowledge? Somebody say it to you about me. So what, what is Jesus saying this? So <clears throat> here is of your own accord. There are you know different um, translation of your own opinion. And then Greek Bible is this of yourself. Yourself. 
So, do you say that that I'm a king? Do you say that yourself? Say that yourself is out of your own heart, or you just take it. You just say that because others say it to you. That's Jesus asked Pilate. So I, I just uh, pick. There are a lot of in interpretation about it, but one interpretation: What kind of a king do you have in your mind when you ask Jesus? When Pilate asked Jesus, "Are you the king of the Jews?" And then through <coughs> question, Jesus asking. What kind of a king do you have in your mind? A Roman king or a Jewish king? A political king or a spiritual king? Clarify the matter. What, what kind of king you, uh, you are talking about? That's one kind of interpretation. Another is, did you see me causing trouble as a king? Did you see? Is there any evidence? Did I cause trouble, riot, or you know, behave as a king? Did you see it on your yourself? Or you don't know anything about me just because of the priest to say that he said he's king. You just take it. Uh, Yourself was convinced I was, you know, king, or you're just listening to others. That's another kind of, or another kind of interpretation is, you are judging about king, and how serious it is. That's very, very serious. You know, that's a very serious matter. And are you, you know, uh, doing this with your own, you know, confidence? Or you're just listening to others and following others? So, <clears throat> kind of a warning. It is it's a serious matter. So, as we study, we will find the better answer. Okay, next question. Who is the interrogator, the pilot or Jesus? Jesus asked him back. Yeah, officially, <laughs> pilot officially is the interrogator. Officially, pilot is interrogator, but already Jesus is leading. Jesus is leading the conversation. And Jesus asking Pilate, what is your position? What is your own understanding about the king of the Jews? Wow. So, Jesus is interrogating Pilate. <laughs> okay, question five. What did the pilot answer? Pilot answered, Am I Jew? Your own nation and the chief priest have delivered you over to me. What have you done? Okay. So, Pilot didn't exactly answer Jesus' question, and then he just avoid. I'm not a Jew, I'm a Roman. Right. I don't know about it, I don't care about it. Okay. Next question. 
camera. What question did Pilate ask to continue the interrogation? Yeah. What have you done? <clears throat> because the pilot should find out the guilt, crime, or sin of Jesus, or, or breaking the law, or, you know. So what have you done? So pilot is moving to another issue, right? It's a, okay, next. Why should Jesus have answered the pilot? Pilate asked, what have you done? Then what should Jesus have answered? I healed many people. Right. I <laughs> saved people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Jesus should have answered what he did. He taught in the synagogues or temple. He healed the blind man. He healed the paralyzed man. He healed a woman who was bleeding or dying. And he performed so many miracles. He even raised the dead. And then he raised his own disciples. I mean, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong deserved to be executed on the cross, you know. But Jesus didn't say this at all. And the next question. What did Jesus say instead? My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting so that I might be delivered over to the Jews. And my kingdom is not from the world. Right. Jesus did not answer Tyler's question. She just talked about my kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servant would have fought for me, but my kingdom is not from this world. Jesus is saying, Jesus was saying to Pilate, there is another kingdom you don't know. Another kingdom. My kingdom is not like, you know, kingdom in this world. This is, there is another kingdom which you do not know. Okay, next question. <clears throat> what kind of kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what kind of kingdom is the kingdom of Jesus? My kingdom is out of this world. Yeah. So, Jesus' kingdom is it doesn't belong to this world. Kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. It is a spiritual kingdom, eternal kingdom. Different kingdom. Heavenly kingdom. Okay, next. How is the Jesus kingdom different from the kingdom of this world? So Jesus kingdom is a spiritual kingdom and also Jesus kingdom the Jesus rule over the, the territory that's Jesus kingdom. The 
Kinder of this world, you see. Kinder of the world. At that, time, at that time, it was the Roman Empire, you know. But all other kingdoms on this, in this world, later on, me. I mean, I just put, you know, Kingdom of Russia, Kingdom of England, France, all the same. Here, here, to be a king, kill, kill, kill. You have to kill. Son kill father, son kill mother, brother kill brother, to be a king. Killing. And then, uh, short. Yeah. They, they rule with the terror. Terror. So the Romans, you know, used the crucifixion. Terror. And this is uh, so visible. And this belong to this world. Belong to this world. Jesus kingdom. Here. Gives life. Gives life. To sinners. And they rule with love. Instead of terror. is the invisible, invisible in the heart of a people. It's not on this earth, it's in a heaven and in our heart, in our heart. It's different kingdom. Okay, next question. Who are my servants? Why didn't they try to prevent Jesus from arrest? Who are my servants? Can you read that first? My, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting. That I might be delivered over to the Jews. Might not, not be. be delivered over to the Jews. So, who are my servants? So disciples. Do you think uh, 12 disciples would fight and um, prevent Jesus from arrest? Mm -hmm. Angels. 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 <clears throat> angels. The angels. Okay, let's look at Matthew, verse 26, chapter 26, verse 53. Gospel Matthew. Can somebody read it? Matthew, Chapter 26, verse 53. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? Yeah. This at the time he's arrested. He's just telling his disciples, don't fight. Put your sword back. Don't you think if I ask my father, he will give me right away 12 legions of angels. So 12 legions of angels, how many angels? How many of them? One legion is how many soldiers? Yeah, 1,000. So Jesus said at the time when, you know, arrest, Say, if I ask the father, my father, he would send me right away 12,000 angels. So, 
So, you know, they would fight the Roman soldiers and the Jews. But he just said, you know, it's not the time to fight like that. So don't fight, put your sword back. When we think about Jesus, we always, Jesus who was arrested, suffered, died on the cross. But another side of Jesus is, he is so powerful, victorious, so powerful, Jesus. He has, uh, okay, when we, can you imagine? 12,000 angels come and fight for Jesus. This is the army of the heaven, the Jesus kingdom. But you can read later on Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 16. It, it describes how Jesus is fighting. He's riding on a white horse and then, you know, all other angels riding on a white horse and then they are following Jesus and fighting. And the weapon is, uh, is that a uh, sword coming from Jesus' mouth and he will strike the nations. So amazing power, amazing. Um, when Jesus is coming back, you know, second time to take all of us to Father's house. How many angels are coming with Jesus? Because the, all the angels will go four corners of the world and then take us, you know, to heaven. And then how many, how many believers, Christians, do you think have to go to Heaven. If there are hundred million, that means hundred million angels are coming together with Jesus. I mean, the heavenly army is amazing there. Yeah. Uh, not only numbers, but also a power superior. Look at two angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Two angels. And then whole city, whole city gathered to fight, you know. But even though in number, angels only two, and the other side, the whole city gathered. Maybe, I don't know, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000. Whole city gathered, but two angels made them blind. So they couldn't see. So they all scattered. So Jesus' army, Jesus, Jesus' kingdom had superior power of fighting. So win! But Jesus said he didn't use it. But time comes, the heavenly kingdom, the angels, heavenly soldiers' army come, will have decisive victory. They're not going to fight like us every month or weeks. Like, you know, uh, one kingdom fight against another kingdom. God's victory is, it takes just a few minutes, few seconds. Win! That's how heavenly uh, army would fight. So, we have to know the other side of Jesus. It is undefeatable, victorious army. Okay, next question. Um, why didn't they? Why didn't they fight to prevent Jesus from arresting? Mm -hmm. um, because it was not the time for Right, right. Because this is the time Jesus offers his life, his blood. For the forgiveness of the sins. So, 
heavenly army didn't come. They were just holding. Right. But otherwise, any time when there is fighting, they will come. Okay. Question seven. seven. <clears throat> what is the purpose of Jesus' birth? Uh, 37. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you, are, you are a king, then, said the pilot. Jesus answered, you are right, in saying, I am the king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. And everyone on the side of the truth listened to me. So, Jesus was born to be the king. Huh? My answer is Jesus Jesus was born to be the king. That's why Jesus For this purpose. purpose. Uh -huh. He is king of heavenly kingdom. And to bear witness to the truth. Jesus was born to testify to the truth. To testify his kingdom. To Pilate, to the pagan, unbelieving governor, Jesus testified about his kingdom, my kingdom. For that purpose, he was born. <clears throat> Next question. What is the purpose of Jesus coming into the world? Right, to, to bear witness. My kingdom, heavenly kingdom. The kingdom the pilot didn't know, but he bear witness. There is another kingdom you do not know. To bear witness to my kingdom, I came into this world. He left to heaven and came into this world. Okay, Karen. What is the purpose of being arrested and standing before the Roman court? It's the same. The same. To testify to the truth. To testify Jesus' kingdom. Introduce my kingdom. And then, next question. Um, what is the purpose of Jesus' death on the cross? Uh, Jesus died on the cross for us, for our sins, and to forgive our sins and save our life. To testify His kingdom. His kingdom. Mm -hmm. All, all to testify. Their testimony. His kingdom is there is forgiveness with the blood of Jesus. Okay, so Jesus was so focused to introduce his kingdom. Pilate asked, what have you done? Instead of uh, teaching, healing, miracle, you know, Jesus introduced heavenly kingdom, my kingdom. Because Jesus was from birth to death, all oh, his mind is so focused, has a very clear purpose. He testified to his kingdom. Even 
change the di direction of interrogation, Jesus bring up to tell his kingdom. Had Jesus wanted to set free or prove his innocence, Jesus would talk about something else. But Jesus <clears throat> found opportunity and testified to Roman governor about his kingdom. Wow, this part is so amazing. It is so amazing. Even though he was bound with a chain or rope, he introduces, testifies my kingdom. Okay, next question. Who oh, listen to the testimony of Jesus to the truth? Some chosen, past chosen people. Um, 37, the last sentence, verse, verse 37. Truth, listen to my voice. Right. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Another translation, everyone who is on the side of truth listens to my voice. So, people in their heart seeking the truth they have a heart to listen to his <clears throat> voice. Because Jesus testified about his kingdom before Pilate, he was recorded. Over 2,000 years, people listened to Jesus' testimony and listened his. And we also. Today we are listening what Jesus, his testimony about his kingdom, his truth. We are listening because we are on the side of truth and we listen to Jesus. He is our king and our kingdom is not of this world. Our kingdom is heavenly kingdom, God's kingdom. Different. Okay, next. Pilate listened to the testimony to the truth. Um, yeah, he said, You are a king then. Mm -hmm. yeah, sort of. Yeah. Um, Okay, question eight. Question eight. What did Pilate ask Jesus? 48. What is truth? Pilate asked. Uh -huh. What is truth? So, when Pilate listened to Jesus, he's a prisoner, didn't defend himself at all. His prisoner was talking about some kind of kingdom and truth. So Pilate, oh, he's talking about truth. So Pilate asked, what is truth? So did the Pilate listen to Jesus' truth or not? He didn't listen. He asked, what is truth? Then the, there is no more about truth. He's gone to proceed the next, you know. He's gone. So, well, this prisoner is talking about something. 
really, you know, truthful. So I asked Jesus, what is truth? Then he was busy. He's going to continue the trial. As we see this, Pilate doesn't belong to the truth. So he misses. And then when we go back to question four, you know, Jesus said, do you say this over your own self? Or did others say to you about me? When you think about Jesus introduced his kingdom to Pilate, it looks like to me Jesus is preparing Pilate's heart to listen to new kingdom that Pilate didn't know. But, and then Pilate got something out of it. All that is, oh, then you must be a king. And what is truth? That much he got out of it from Jesus' testimony. Okay, so question A, second question. What is truth? Truth is Jesus is king. Right. Jesus has kingdom. Jesus is the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth and the light and the way. Jesus is the truth. His kingdom is truth. <clears throat> okay. Question eight, third question. How many persons do you see? I will do this. When you think he asked Jesus, what is truth? So maybe he, he never, never seriously thought about truth. <laughs> He was working hard to be successful. He became a Roman proconsul or governor in Judea. Maybe he spent a lot of time to study law, practice horse riding, practice how to use, you know, weapons, and then how to handle political matters, all this. So he became very successful. He became a proconsul, very successful. But looks like he's far away from truth. Even he asked a question, what is, what is truth? And then he didn't stay. He didn't stay for Jesus' answer. He saw Jesus. He listened to Jesus' word. The truth was in front of him, but he missed. He didn't catch because his heart was not on the side of the truth. He was a man belonging to worldly kingdom, his world. was right there in front of him. He saw, he heard, but he didn't catch. Because he's not seeking truth. Right there. Okay, question nine. Nine. What killed did he find in Jesus? 38. I found no basis for the charge against him. Pilate 
a proud no guilt. Yeah. Not guilty. He found nothing wrong with Jesus. Jesus was innocent and holy man speaking about truth. Pilate cannot put him to death. Okay, next question. How did he try to release Jesus from the Jews? He offered a Jewish custom that released one man for the Passover. So he wanted to release Jesus. Right. So he uses that every Passover the governor, Roman governor, released one prisoner. So he had in his mind, he's going to release Jesus. Okay, next question. Read the first 40. They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Barabbas. Yeah. Fail. But next Bible studies, more detail about Pilate trial sentencing. And then it will be very clear why he failed. But if I say in other bands, he failed because he had no truth in him. He's just, you know, situation by situation, he just managed with his political skills, but he had no truth in him. So up to now he was okay, but after Jesus' trial, he completely failed. We have to have truth in our heart. Otherwise, you know, we will fail like a pilot. Okay. Our Bible studies up to here. Yes.